Today we're going to be making our lesson for our virtual students in third grade through fifth grade. So you should have gotten a bag with art supplies in it and you can dump all of those things out. And I'm gonna show you how we can use them to create our lesson. Now you're also going to need a pencil and you can use a ruler if you'd like, but I'm gonna try drawing my lines without a ruler. But if you have one, you can also use that as well. So this little sheet reminds us that the art show is May 26th and that you'll need to drop off this artwork completed by May 16th to have it be part of our show. So you can set that paper to the side as well and we're gonna get started. Now, as we discussed, your art show project this year is all about optical illusions. So we're going to be inspired by the artist M.C. Escher, who is one of the most famous artists who use illusions in his work. He is a Dutch artist, which surprisingly is not even as much of a mathematician as he looks like he is in his work because he didn't have a lot of talent for math. But once he started investigating how to make art and how to make these illusions show up in his work, he really had to use those math concepts. It was pretty cool. He does mind-bending optical illusions, usually drawn or printed, and then he'll create these different shapes that kind of come together to play tricks on your eye. One of his most famous quotes was, he who wonders discovers that this in itself is wonder. So w the fact that you can wonder about art, about life, about things around you is a pretty big wonder. It's pretty cool. So today we're going to be making an optical illusion that is a simplified version of a sphere or a little ball that looks like it's on a surface but becomes 3D. So here's how we're going to start. First, you will need to write your name on the back, and I'd also love you to write your grade so that I know which grade each of my friends are in, third through fifth. And then on the front of your paper, you're going to pick a few spaces to trace your circles. So you'll notice in the bag, you have a few different kinds of circles, some big pieces, some little ones. So I would say probably pick two or three or four circles to add to your paper. Most should be in the center of your page. It'll be a little trickier if they go off the edge. So let's try to keep it um, relatively simple for ourselves and pick a few spaces in the middle of our page. So that's my first circle. I like this one here. That's gonna be number two. You could do just one if you want to, two or three. I'm gonna do this little baby one right here. Mm, maybe right over there. Perfect. So your first step is just to trace your circles on your page. Okay. Once you have that done, then you can dump out your bag of your tools. And I know I just kind of filled a random assortment of crayons for you, but you can pick your own crayons if there's some that you like better at your own home. But I would prefer you use crayons so it helps with the cohesion or the way that all of our artwork looks like it fits together when it appears on our virtual art board um, that will be part of our drive through art show. So these two tools that you'll find in your bag, your Sharpie and your um, black soft pastel, set those to the side. We'll use those for the finishing steps. Now for our coloring, you're going to need probably two colors that are your most favorite. So like I said, I put a bunch of options in here for you. So just pick your two that you really like. So I think I'm gonna try, well actually I'm gonna try them on the back and see which ones I like best. I'm thinking maybe that one. And then I've got this kind of mustardy yellow. That one's pretty cool. Ooh, I like that teal. Um, ooh, that purple's nice too. Maybe the purple and the teal. I don't know. So you're gonna pick two. So once you pick your two colors, actually, now that I look at it, I know I really want this one. So maybe I'll do purple and orange. Okay, once you pick your two colors, then you can set those to the side because we need to draw our pencil lines. So here's how we're going to make this optical illusion appear. Like I said, if you want to use a ruler, a ruler is gonna help you get a really precise line. So let me show you what it looks like to use a ruler. I know I initially said I wasn't gonna use a ruler, but the more I think about it, the more I think that's pretty necessary. So you can actually make your lines across your page the same width. They don't need to be all the same um, as each other's for our artwork, but I'm gonna show you how to make them look like they are an inch wide. So the way that I like to mark inches is hold your ruler across your page and make a small little dash at each inch mark. So hopefully you'll be able to get your hands on a ruler because I do think that's gonna be pretty helpful for this first step, okay? And the wide way is 12 inches. Then, because I wanna know that these match up, I'm also gonna make those little marks on the edge of my paper on the bottom. So again, 
get these little edges here. Sound effects are welcome. And you could do your little tiny dashes on the edge. Good. So we're kind of setting ourselves up for success right now. Now, obviously, my 12th line right here, or my, the end of my paper, is where my paper ends, so I don't really need a mark there. Okay? So now, I'm going to draw my lines by making sure that my ruler shows me each of these little dashes right here and right here. Then, as you remember how we discussed together for our virtual learning, you're going to make a straight line until you hit one of your circles and that line becomes curved. So it goes like this, straight, curve, straight. Okay, now if you wanna wait to do the curved lines, that might be helpful just to make sure that you have them going the correct way. So I'm gonna do all my straight lines first. Straight and stop, straight and stop and straight and stop. And just make sure that they hit the circles, but we're gonna wait to do those curvy lines. But you might just kind of see where this is headed with the fact that we are going to create that optical illusion. All right, now the smaller circles are gonna have their own kind of vibe because they're a little bit, a little bit tinier, but the big circle is really gonna have that nice optical illusion with how we make our lines. If you decide you wanna get really complicated and make your lines maybe a half inch apart, you're gonna have a lot more coloring to do, but it could be super detailed. Maybe you wanna make your lines three quarters of an inch. Um, it's up to you, but an inch is usually a pretty good, pretty good distance to, to do your lines. Okay, so now I've got all of my lines just about done in the same direction. So it's basically like I'm making a bunch of parallel lines, waiting to do my curved lines. Over like this, here we go, until I get this side done, okay? So this is my first side. Now I'm gonna make my curved line since I have this part done. So if you remember, when we talked about the sphere, the curved line, if it's closer to this side of the circle, it's gonna curve this way. If my line is closer to this side of the circle, it's gonna curve this way, okay? So it's kind of like I'm bending that line around the circle, okay? So let's try this one. This one right here is closer to this side, so I'm gonna curve it with that gentle C towards that side of my sphere. This one's pretty close to the middle, but it still looks like a little further this way, so we're gonna curve to the left, okay? This one's over to the left further, so we're gonna curve to the left, okay? Keep going. This one right here is obviously super close to this right side, so a gentle curve, like that. And as always, a sound effect is helpful. Curve this little friend. That one's a little wonky. Curve this little friend. I might need to fix that one, but we'll see how it goes. This one looks like it's pretty close to the middle. So if it's close to the middle, you could just give it like a super gentle curve. To me, it looks like it's just off to the side, just a little bit to the left. This one here goes to the left. And this one here goes to the left as well. So as you can tell, those lines kind of bend around the sphere to really make it look like they're curving in that in that edge. I don't like I didn't like how straight that line was, so I'm gonna edit and change mine a little bit. We're gonna curve it just a little bit more. Slow and steady, Mrs. K. All right, perfect. So we've got our first sides done. Straight lines, then curving around our sphere. Now we're going to do the same thing using our ruler, marking by an inch and we're going to get our lines going the other way. So your paper is 10 inches this other shorter way instead of 12. So we're going to mark those edges right by the edge here. 10, we're good. Come back down to the bottom. Line up the edge of your ruler here. Ooh, a little closer right there. Mark each of your inches. And then we're going to do our straight lines next. So flip my paper. And remember, it was a little easier for us to start by doing our straight line first and just ignore the circle. So stop at the circle and then we'll do that curve. In my opinion, it's a little tricky to try to add the curve as we draw the line because it's we have to really look close to see which way the curve goes. So that's why we're just going to start with our straight lines. Now, as you remember, I will be meeting with you for our live class. Um, in person for us to have time to work. So if you're getting a little bit confused on maybe some of the measuring or which way your curved lines go, you can always ask me a question or check in with me during our live meets to see if there's anything you need to change or edit. 
But remember, when we make art, the most important thing is to have fun and to practice, just to try. Because sometimes art can be a little bit tricky. And I totally know that making mistakes can be frustrating, but I just want you to try your best. All right, I'm almost done with my straight lines here. And we're still going to do, looks like it came up a little bit. Um, we're still going to do those curved lines around the outside of our spheres to give us that illusion. Now, as we talked about at the beginning, inspired by MC Escher, one of the master illusionists, if you hear the words optical illusion, basically just means optical has to do with your eye and illusion has to do with a trick. So it's a trick of the eye. The trick is that these spheres appear to be coming off of my page. So now I'm just gonna start with this one. Remember, when I hit my line, which one does it sit closer to on my circle? So it's closer to this side of my circle, so I'm gonna curve my C or my arch that way. Okay, this one's a little closer here, so I'm gonna curve over here. Okay, let's move to this one. A little closer to the left. This one's closer to the left, a gentle curve. This one's closer to the right. And this one's closer to the right here too. So we're kind of just playing connect the dots. Okay, this one, this is a little tricky. When it's on the very edge of your page, you could just decide, okay, does that just look like it might just live near the edge here or can I get a curve in there? So I think for my opinion, I'm probably just gonna leave it and I'll move to the next one because that one's just so, so close. So now again, curve, connect the dots, okay? This one curves to the left, curve and connect the dots. This one looks super close to the middle. So if it's in the middle, remember you could just make a straight line here. I think it's so close. Man, let me just let me just measure it and see. Six and a half, three, th yeah, it's like basically in the middle. So then I'm just gonna do my straight line here to connect. This one curves to the right, curves to the right. And this one, oh, I could probably fit this little baby in here. Like that, perfect. So now you have all of your lines gridded out on your page. The next thing we're going to do is to sharpie those lines so we can see them from far away. So any line that you drew in a pencil, including the edge of your circle, you need to trace with your Sharpie, okay? So all of your pencil lines, you're gonna trace right over the top and then erase if there was any pencil showing through just to clean that up. So you can pause the video, but I'm gonna do a super speed motion of me tracing my pencil lines. Let's go. After you're done tracing, if there's any little pencil lines showing through, if you need to just fix it with a little trace and erase, make sure you clean up your work so you feel proud of the things that you've accomplished. And once you're done tracing and erasing, now it's time to color. So again, you're gonna pick your two favorite colored crayons from crayons that you have or from the container that I sent home with you. And you're going to decide which one you're going to start with and fill in the whole thing in that checkerboard pattern. So this is how our illusion really comes to life. So I decided I'm going to use that sort of red orange and my purple, and I'm gonna start from one side and do all the same colors because I really love to just not have to set my crayon down and use it the whole time. So here's what I'll show you. When you color, remember to try outlining first so that you can really get your edges nice and filled in and then color in more quickly the inside space because we've got a little wall to help protect our page. Now, when you're thinking about coloring in the next spaces here, remember, if that part of the square comes up onto a sphere, you're going to need to color that one in too. So this little edge right here is in fact that square bending. So I need to color this part in as well. So every time you go down your little line, look to see if this is part of that circular, um, if it kind of continues up to that sphere. Okay, now I'm not gonna make you watch me color this entire thing, but I just wanna show you this part here so you can see how you're going to make it bend around the sphere. So the next part, because I know a grid or this kind of checkerboard pattern goes every other, my next one's gonna be here, but remember, both of these parts need to be colored in with my checkerboard color because it is in fact part of that pattern. Okay, so this one here, then when I look at my pattern, these two are our top neighbors, so then this next one here is going to be colored in. 
and getting that nice bold outline edge. And I know sometimes it's hard, it's difficult to color with a lot of hard pressure, but remember for the art show, our friends, our viewers are going to be far away from our art. So I'm gonna challenge you as an artist to press so hard with your crayon and so solidly that it looks like it was almost painted. Okay, not any white space showing through, but really neat craftsmanship to try to fill in your entire space. You might get a little sore hand, so just stretch it out, take a break, and then come back to it when you're ready to make your art the very best you can. Okay, so just thinking about our workmanship, our craftsmanship of how we color something, if I'm doing a quick and light coloring, that to me looks like my craftsmanship could be a little bit bolder because I want people to be able to see it from far away. That's more of a whisper for my crayon. So I need to go back in, color my edges, and be proud of my work. Okay, what about this one if I color like this? Is that my best craftsmanship? No, you silly gooses. I need to color in my bold edges and make myself proud with the decisions that I make for my artwork. So I'm gonna do a super speed motion um, to do my coloring of my entire grid. It's gonna take me a little bit of time, but remember, you can do this in steps. You have a few, um, like a week and a half before this needs to come back to Mrs. K. So you can do a little bit at a time and then come back to it. But of course, you're going to do the other color in the other spaces. So I would do my purple inside my extra spaces here. And then by the time I'm all done, I'll have my entire thing colored in. And then we just have one more quick little step. Okay, so super speed, time to color. That will definitely strengthen your art muscles. So now the final step we're going to do is to actually add a shadow to help with our illusion. So you can tell just from this grid that it already gives us the illusion that these, these checkerboards are kind of wrapping around our spheres, but this is where we're going to use our soft pastel. And I also have a black crayon because sometimes crayon can be very waxy once it's super dark and filled in. So we're gonna just test first to see if our soft pastel is enough for a shadow. So we're gonna find the halfway point of our sphere and make a shadow along the outside edge of the left side of each of our spheres. So I'm gonna try my soft pastel first, but as I'm noticing, it's a little hard to get it to show up on the surface because it is so waxy. So just like always, we know artists are problem solvers. So the best thing you can do is to find a darker crayon, like a black crayon or a super dark blue. And we're gonna try making our shadow that way. So problem solving to its finest, the soft pastel, you can just keep and make your own art with, but I have a black crayon. And crayon on top of crayon is gonna work a lot better. So use a black crayon or a dark gray or a dark brown or blue, something dark. And you're gonna make your darkest line right next to the left side of your sphere. So we basically just do this half, okay? So I'm gonna make it super duper dark for, I don't know, maybe the width of a finger or so. And then I'm gonna start to fade it because as always, this is a shadow and a shadow doesn't necessarily just have a super hard edge. It starts to fade a little bit. So now I'm gonna bring that to a little bit of a whisper and let my crayon be a little bit lighter and start to fade off that edge. Okay, so I'm just gonna slowly fade, fade a little bit more and help to give that nice, gentle shadow. Now I'll need to do this to the left side of each of my spheres, but already do you see how much that helps to make my sphere look like it's popping off my page? The shadow is definitely essential to this illusion. Okay, so I think, I feel pretty good about that one. Black crayon works obviously much better than this, but as you know, Mrs. K is a problem solver just like you are, and we realized that that part probably wasn't gonna work with soft pastel. Okay, so then I'm also going to go to my other sides, same side that my shadow needs to be on, dark along the edges, and then fade to that whisper. And just gently help that illusion to give us that kind of kind of trick that our that our spheres are sitting on top of our checkerboard page. Okay, last one right here. So nice and dark along that edge, really press hard. Remember, I know your, your wrists and your arms are gonna be a little bit sore because we're making our art muscles super duper strong, but really make sure you've got that nice dark edge. Okay, so after you finish with that shadow, 
Now our illusion is complete. So for the art show, you'll need to return this artwork back to the school office at the, at the latest on May 16th, but you can do that before it too. So just make sure that your name is on the back, okay? You can put your grade on the back too, but then you can deliver this to the front office and I will display them on our big art panel for the art show on May 26th. So my friends, I hope you had fun creating your optical illusion and I'll see you and your artwork pretty soon. Bye.